Katie and Gwen from Two Healthy Fit Vegans and our doggies. And we're in our house with, oh, dog drama here. Um, with our friend Hope, who is staying with us for the next uh, foreseen future. We're not too sure how long. <sighs> and the tea's ready. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we going to do today with yeah, the video? So today we're going to do a Q&A, so we have a few questions that we often uh, get asked uh, on Instagram or on our post, so we're going to answer some of uh, these questions. Okay, but first let me go grab a tea. Make sure you guys check out our friend Hope's, um, she has an Instagram, a YouTube, and all over social media. Her page is at Hope and Healing 144, I believe. But we'll link it in the description below so you guys can check that out. Lots of good stuff if you're interested in any of the type of stuff that you'll be seeing us do over the next little bit. So back to the questions for today. All right, yeah, let's start with the first question. First question is, uh, what are we training for? So uh, basically we train for ultra marathon running, uh, trail running. Uh, with distances like 50k, 50 miles, and 100 miles. Our next race is in a few days, five days, and it will be a 50 miles in Montana, uh, next to Glacier National Park. It will be the, the state championship for the USA track and field for this distance, 50 miles. So we are really excited to do it. Uh, we, we train for a long time for that, uh, even though this we register for that race pretty late, but um, you know that's that's the kind of distance that we train for. So we are really really glad that we get uh, a chance to compete in this distance this uh, distance again this year because that will be the last race, uh, and then it will be off season until until next year. Okay, so next question. Yeah. What does our average training week look like? Ah, okay. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't run like crazy all the time and we haven't for our, you know, we haven't always been doing that. Our average training week now looks like we're running like six days a week with one day off per week. And we've been doing the one day off per week now for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, and so we average about 50 to 60 miles a week. Uh, in Gwen writes our training plan, of and course. And yeah, uh, it's it's a you know it's a delicate balance because we haven't been running for a long time. Uh, basically, just running consistently since January this year. So it's only uh, about you know nine months of consistent training. So uh, we don't want to you know like uh, progress too quickly and go into injury. So we just try to increase our mileage uh, slowly. slowly. Uh, we also do some quality workouts sometimes with some speed work and mostly tempos. Uh, so far we've been doing mostly tempos and not uh, much like really pure uh, speed work with you know 100 meter repeats or 200 meter repeats. But we're gonna get to it uh, this off season. We're gonna use that time to work on more speed because it's gonna be it's gonna be winter. It's gonna be cold. It's not gonna be as enjoyable to go out. So uh, that's what we will be doing. But yeah, we run every day. We usually go in the morning uh, before breakfast. We just wake up uh, at six and at six thirty we are usually running. Now we have to bring our own headlamp <laughs> yeah. uh, because it gets dark. But yeah, we run for about an hour, an hour and 15. There is some elevation here, so to get 60 miles in a week, uh, it's, it's a little more time. It takes a little more time than uh, when we were in Florida, for example. But, and, yeah. and then we do the hour and 15 minute about runs most of the week. And then on the weekend, lately how it's been working is on like Saturday, we'll do our long run. And so the other days, usually we have about one quality workout in the day, maybe earlier in the week where we do like, we try to beat our own PR to the top of a mountain. And that's been a pretty, really hard workout. Um, I kind of have been pushing it really hard on those. Gwen has too, we've broken some personal records. And then on the weekend, 
we'll do like a we're up to a 20 mile long run so that's pretty far for us um you know at this point it's not far for some people but it's really far for most people and then the next day is off day yeah it so depends. sometime yeah. sometime we would go running because it's also good a good strategy to go running on uh, tired legs so sometimes we we just take our day off in the week during the week mm -hmm. Uh, and during our day off, we usually do some yoga just to, you know, improve recovery with some stretches and yeah. Yeah. And on our days off too, um, with nutrition, which we'll get into in a minute, on the days off, we usually like really relax. So we sleep in a little bit, we wake up, we do yoga, um, blissology yoga, of course, and, and then we make like pancakes. And we just do a really simple pancake recipe from our cookbook, just blended oats, banana, and almond milk. And we do that with banana ice cream, and that's kind of our thing right now. We've been doing it yeah. for like six months. It's amazing, we look forward to it. And, and then we just really like rest the rest of the day, do, you know, enjoy whatever else we have going on. And that just keeps our training really fresh and really interesting. And it's my first time really training like this, running and pushing myself and working with the schedule that Gwen's created. So it's really been such a challenge and so fun. And I can't believe I'm about to run my second 50 mile race. Wow. Yeah. All right, let's get to the next question. Uh, what shoes do we run in? Uh, we run in ultra, ultra shoes. Yeah. Um, Ultra is a zero drop shoe, uh, so all of their shoes are zero drop with a wide toe box. Um, and we did a, I did a review about one of their shoes. Um, we'll post that in the link below too. But basically, um, just really quite, I don't know how you, not minimal because there's cushioning. So yeah, it's a zero drop, but there's a decent amount of cushioning. So that helped us transition. Um, from a minimal shoe into running in a zero drop on the road and now we're using them on the trails just because I don't know we love them yeah yeah uh, I mean you know like I don't think I've ever had um, a blister yeah. in ultra yeah. shoes which is you it's know, insane it, it's, yeah they insane. are like, just so comfortable and I get quite some miles out of the shoes I use them until the very end and <laughs> Uh, yeah, I run like the last long peak that I was running in. Uh, I used them for over 800 miles. So uh, yeah, quite some time. <laughs> okay, so another question we get a lot is, are we still running in minimalist barefoot shoes? So clearly we answered that one. No, we're not. Um, not really. Yeah, we, we are not. We, we, we do sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but I think like the minimal shoes is good as a tool. To, uh, to improve running form. Uh, it is not a tool to perform at the best, you know, like uh, wearing that, this kind of shoes because, you know, like just, uh, just look at the, the top uh, performance in trail running. Nobody is wearing, you know, five fingers uh, barefoot shoes. You know, it doesn't mean it can't be done. It's just that when you're putting in that many miles yeah. consistently, it is, and I, you know, I never, a year ago, like I wouldn't have thought I'd be saying this, but it is hard on the legs. And there is a difference with the cushioning. And you can still have a zero drop, really like natural feeling shoe that protects, that provides a little yeah, bit of cushioning need protection. And protection. I mean, especially if you run on technical trail with a lot of rocks. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys know, I broke my toe two years yeah. ago running in um, Vibram Five Fingers and that didn't stop me from running in them. I still I still love them. I still run in them yeah. But you just have to like you yeah. have to be careful. You, you have to use them properly and yeah. the point of minimal shoes is You know to to force you to run on your forefoot because if you run on your heel uh, With minimal shoes, it's gonna hurt. You're gonna realize it. You just go barefoot you run uh, in the street and you just naturally gonna go for forefoot mm -hmm because it's gonna hurt and that's the point of the minimal shoes then once you use it properly in your training to change your running form and improve your, your running form then you can keep this form and use 
other shoes that will also protect your feet when you go on longer miles on technical trails uh, so you just need to use uh, you know minimalist shoes in in the right way and they are great for that but they they just need to be used in, at the right time yeah and now that we run like that um, with that running form we run like that all the time and it's second nature we don't even think about it we just land and we don't heel strike anymore really saves your feet so um yeah, yeah learn more the, about that if you're interested injuries, yeah you know just look up on that because it's really going to help you guys run better feel better and avoid injury um okay next question here um the next question is do we cross train and if so what do we do well uh yeah i think uh, cross training is really great and we we do cross train i mean i play some tennis uh, i like to play tennis and it's fun. Um, and sometimes you play quite a bit, like yeah, out yeah. like four times yeah, a week. Yeah, I would. Yes, yeah, so it depends. Like, uh, but yeah, I would. I would play sometime, and uh, I like to bike. I bike to work every day. Uh, and, I, I used and to work, road bike, but I don't have my road bike anymore. And we can tell you tell you guys what we're doing for work right now. Is I'm working here at the house, which you guys saw, doing this, just getting the B and B up and going. Lots to do. Um, and Gwen is working um, yeah as a um, marine engineer on the computer so just kind of like overseeing the, the work on different ships that's uh, what I study marine yeah. engineering so that's what I do now so he rides his bike to a cafe to get internet, to get internet yeah. where he then works and then of course we also both work as health coaches and holistic yeah. nutritionists with two healthy fit vegans so if you guys are interested in that check out our website and yeah so we help clients there um you know reach their maximum potential with um health happiness training whatever it is so yeah that's what we do good uh, business plug here. yeah yeah um oh yeah back to cross training and yeah we do we do yoga, so that's cross training. Yeah. And when I started doing yoga, I didn't think that I could develop like I've always been very thin, but I have gotten stronger, a lot stronger since since practicing yoga. And there was even a period of my life when back in high school when I was weight training and I actually wasn't like getting noticeably stronger. And now that I've been doing yoga, I actually have been getting a lot noticeably stronger. So it's worked really well for me. Um, just develop versatile overall strength and then other than that we don't really do a whole lot we we hike um right now we bike yeah i bike too sometimes yeah but i mean no we don't really just we don't go to the gym and like pump out weights no <laughs> another question we get a lot is with the amount of training that we do people ask like how do we have to change and adapt our diet does our nutrition change how can we eat so much lots of people say that you know we can't eat like you guys because we don't run as much as you um what do you think about this i mean yes our nutrition changes because we have to eat more yeah so i mean uh, we i i definitely do uh eat less salads and less uh you know fresh uh food or like i mean raw food and i include a lot more beans and a lot more rice uh, more calorie rich foods yeah, from the plant kingdom which are kind of hard to come yeah. by and, and which is uh, you know it's still it's still really good but i don't know if i would be able to get enough energy from just raw food i mean it would just take a lot of time eating a lot of time preparing and i'm kind of like lazy lazy with cooking and when i come back from work i like to just go in the fridge get beans and rice make a burrito or something and it takes me like five minutes and um, that's what I like. I yeah. don't like to spend 30 minutes when I'm already starving and so... Yeah, so beans and rice are yeah, a big staple. Yeah. Potatoes, huge staple. We don't eat a whole lot of pasta. We still eat lots of salads and fruit in the morning. Smoothies, yeah. bananas, smoothie in the morning. lots so. of frozen fruit, organic, everything when possible. But our, you know, our macros of our diet don't change. We don't eat, no, like we don't eat more fat. We don't eat more protein because we're working out more. Yeah, we, we just, still eat like a whole food, high carbohydrate, low fat. We eat more, fat. but of, of, the a, same stuff. Know, of the same same food. And, yeah. and that's kind of like the key is like, whatever you are doing, you don't want to, you know, like play with micronutrients. Like, should I add more of this? Like, basically, if you need, you know, more of something, you need more of everything. So mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of like, 
the it, it's just an easy way to to see that and and I think it's uh it's easier to 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 deal uh with it like that. Another question we get a lot is our what do we like to eat while we're running? Because clearly when you're out running a 50 mile race like we have this Saturday, you're going to need to eat during the race. So Race nutrition and running nutrition is different with everyone and it's really hard to say that what works for me works for you and That's a perfect example because Gwen can eat anything <laughs> He has like an iron stomach and he can eat anything and I can't my stomach is really really touchy during the last 50 mile race I was in horrible stomach cramps like 40 of those 50 miles so Now what I stick to is just really simple stuff. I can eat bananas while running. I can eat some dried fruit like dates and energy gels so we make our own energy gels that's my favorite thing but we don't always have the time or the containers to do that so for this 50 mile race coming up we're gonna just use what do we have a bunch of hammer nutrition yeah, hammer nutrition, hammer nutrition uh, gels. energy gels sometimes we use v fuel they are good to cliff, cliff uh cliff gels are a little too thick and they are hard to eat while running, yeah. uh, they just clog your mouth because they are too thick. So that's why the the V fuel and the hammer nutrition are really good. But uh, you guys should try them out. Yeah, try you them need out. To like, try them and, um, and see what you can think. find the Cliff ones at most places and just see how you like them. See how they taste while running and if you can dissolve them. The Cliff energy blocks are another solution. But that's again like when you're running a high intensity race, like a 50 or like our 50k, which is a 30 mile. Usually when your intensity is pretty high, it's actually, you're breathing so hard, it's really hard to chew and get stuff down. So the more liquid, the better. Um, for longer and longer durations, like lower intensity races, maybe, you know, we're able, during a 100 mile race, for example, people eat anything. They're eating pizza, they're eating burritos. Yeah, of course, you know, because, you know, you spend like, you spend some time, like for some people, 30 hours out there, and you don't gonna eat only gels for 30 hours, so. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's all about how long you're gonna spend on the on the yeah. running and yep. yeah. Um, okay, last question is what is our favorite like pre-race, uh, maybe the night before meal? So I don't know. What is yours? Well, uh, for me, the 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 breakfast before because most of the race start in the morning. Uh, so the last meal before the race, I like it to be a smoothie with bananas and espresso. Uh, and it's, it's so good. It's, it's so good. <laughs> and you put some dates in it to make it uh, sweet. And it's, uh, it's, it's simple. I like to make it simple. I don't like to add a lot of different fruits. And it would be nice to add maybe some ginger and turmeric, but in the same time, it doesn't taste the greatest to me, so. Oh, and a uh, tip there. Another reason why we don't add the ginger and turmeric, the, of the morning of the race is we always make our smoothies the night before because yeah. usually during rice day we're waking up at like 3 or 4 a.m. and we want to just grab our stuff and get in the car and go to the go to the race so we make everything ahead of time and when you make a smoothie with ginger and turmeric the night before it tends to make the smoothie taste really bad oh like just, just really intense so yeah. if yeah. you do that you would have to re you have use, to be ready for that you have to use <laughs> a lot less yeah. than what you used to if you if you are going to let it sit for like 12 hours yeah. or something so that's what i mean and that's what i have usually too before the race um i my stomach i don't know just depends how much time i can eat before the race the night before our favorite meal is usually like potatoes like fries um in a salad or yeah, oil, beans oil, and rice and a oil burrito free, oil, oil free. free fries <laughs> yeah oil free fries <laughs> um in our cookbook too uh, or just like beans and rice and a burrito just really simple stuff um yeah mexican mexican's the best yeah yeah so that's it um yeah and so one last advice for race day is, you know, don't do anything new. I mean, everyone knows that, but sometimes we tend to forget it and think that it's race day, so we need to do it better than what we mm -hmm. do usually, or we do... No, it's... it's uh, Just you, do you, what you, you normally need, do. You need to do it the same way, because if you start changing things, your body is not used to it, and then you end up, you end up like, having problem with your stomach, you end up not performing like you used to, because it's every things are different so you want to you want to have a routine that you keep all the time if you if you want to be on top of your nutrition 
it's not on race day it's yeah. every day if you want to be on top of your training you know it's it's not the week before it's yeah every, all the time you know and speaking about that we practice practice during your long run we practice during our long run eating the types of food that we think we're going to want to eat during the race so we practice with the gels yeah and it really works you know so give that a go practice and one last thing we both did really good at our last race which was I don't know, last, 50K. Yeah, last weekend. So we had like two weeks between our 50K that we did and then this next one coming up in six days. So we're both really hoping that it's kind of gonna be like really good for us and we're gonna give everything we got because really then after that, we're gonna take um, a huge chunk of time off like com competing and we're gonna recover really well. We're gonna go to a yoga teacher training in Santa Cruz California with Blissology Yoga. We're gonna do a lot of yoga and then we're gonna work on, well, we'll tell you what we're gonna do after the race. So yeah, that's a whole nother plan for the winter, but we're gonna utilize the Idaho winters and get out in the snow. So that should be fun. Yeah, how do we approach this coming race? I know it's gonna hurt like hell because uh, we wanna do the best we can and to do the best we can, that means we are just gonna give everything and give everything on the 50 mile means it's gonna hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. So just, we are just ready for that. We, I'm like, even like looking forward to, to that moment when it's gonna hurt a lot and, and see how I react, you know, like, because it's easy to say right now, like I'm ready, I really want to push through that pain, but then when it's happening, you know, on the moment, it's, it's, uh, it's, another, it's another story, so. yeah. I think I'm ready and I think I'm, I, I really want to deal with that pain and we'll see on the race day. What was your last time for your last 50 mile? Uh, it was 9 hours, pretty much 9 hours. Okay, and mine yeah. was in France with the Sea Shepherd racing team and we took a long time. We did it in like near 14 hours. Yeah. So I'm looking to do much better. I'm yeah. looking to cut three, you know, at least three hours off that time. Yeah, um, so we train for it, yeah. we train hard, and it's, it's race day is coming, and we are feeling pretty confident. We work for that, so uh, any, anyway, it's, uh, a, we, I think we would be happy with whatever we do. Yeah. Okay, come here, you guys. Come All on, right. come on. Wait, oh, no. come on, let's come on, come on, you guys, come here. Come, come on. on, come on, come on, Scooty. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, goodbye everyone. Goodbye. We'll see you in the next video. See you next time.